Welcome back everyone today we will be talking about the, the very first automated house, the Echo 4, a brief recap, a deep dive into the Echo 4, about Jim Sutherland. If you remember a few episodes back we took a look into the world of automated or as they're more popularly called, smart homes. Well today we're going to pick up from the very first smart home to be invented. The Echo 4 If you didn't see that episode, I'd already started by mentioning how it was invented by Jim Sutherland in the year 1966. It may seem to the average observer that home automation is a very recent development. That is true if one is thinking of consumer-friendly and affordable smart home solutions. However, the technological advances that got us here have been happening for quite a while. Many technology historians point to Nikola Tesla's creation of a remote control for a toy way back in 1898 as the true beginning of easily accessible consumer-oriented automation. As promising as this was, it would be several decades before electrical appliances became commonplace in the home, and even longer before technology could really deliver on the promise of a futuristic home incorporating those appliances, controlled remotely. There were several technological advances before we arrived at Sutherland's Echo 4 and there were several afterwards. But for now we're mainly focused on the project itself. An intensive look at Sutherland's Echo 4. Sutherland's computer was called the Echo 4, the electronic computing home operator. Echo 4 comprised of four large cabinets weighing approximately 800 pounds and included a central processing unit, CPU, constructed from surplus circuit modules from a Westinghouse per DAC 4 industrial process control computer, magnetic core memory, I.O., input slash output, circuitry and power supplies. With the permission of his employer, Westinghouse, Sutherland took these modules home, designed and built the Echo 4 in less than a year. Several keypads and terminals around the house allowed for interaction by Mrs. Sutherland and the family's three children. The system was operational on April 16, 1966. Programming and interacting with Echo 4 was accomplished by several means, front panel switches on the main cabinet, a programmer's keypad, for octal, near the main cabinet, a paper tape reader and punch, and the kitchen console, which was based on an IBM 735 Selectric typewriter and was used for word processing. Echo 4 caught the attention of the media fairly quickly, with dozens of publications covering it from its initial startup in 1966 until the 1970s. The computer was working in the Sutherland's house until 1976, and was donated to the Computer Museum in Boston in 1984. Well there's not a lot of information of the inventor of the famous Echo 4 out today on the internet. Sutherland worked as an engineer for the American company Westinghouse Electric, designing fossil and nuclear power plant control systems. Surprisingly limited information for a man who made such a huge leap in technology. Talk about living a private life. The, the technological development didn't just stop with the Echo 4. After that came any more upgrades before we could even get to where we presently are. 1975 brought the x Home Automation Project. We were finally getting into the territory of practical devices for actual homes. The X10 devices worked with a building's existing AC wiring and controlled small appliances and lighting fixtures. The 1980s were a game changer for everyday consumers. Motion sensing lights, automatic garage door openers, programmable thermostats, and security systems were now commonplace and affordable. In 1984, the term smart house was coined by the American Association of Home Builders. Then, in 1990, a challenge issued by Dan Lynch, president of the Interop Internet Networking Show resulted in John Romke and Simon Hackett creating a toaster connected to, and controlled from, the Internet. The Internet of Things, IoT, was born, although it would take Kevin Ashton another nine years to contribute the term. That same year, Microsoft contributed its own version of how a smart home should look and function. Microsoft predicted many things that today's smart home owner takes for granted, such as security systems, environment controls, smart locks, and lighting controls. Throughout the 2000s, 
smart devices and systems have been evolving at a rapid pace. It was estimated that by 2012, there would already be 1.5 million automated home systems in place. In 2014, Amazon introduced the Amazon Echo, for Prime members, and while it was originally marketed as a voice-controlled music solution, the inclusion of Alexa quickly demonstrated the use of the device as a smart home hub. The next known significant evolution of smart homes was the X10 Home Automation Project. X10 was developed in 1975 by Pico Electronics of Glenrothes, Scotland, in order to allow remote control of home devices and appliances. It was the first general-purpose domotic network technology and remains the most widely available. In 1970, a group of engineers started a company in Glenrothes, Scotland called Pico Electronics. The company developed the first single-chip calculator. When calculator-integrated circuit prices started to fall, Pico refocused on commercial products rather than plain ICs. In 1974, the Pico engineers jointly developed an LP record turntable, the ADC Accutrack 4000, with Birmingham sound reproducers, at the time the largest manufacturer of record changers in the world. It could be programmed to play selected tracks and could be operated by remote control using ultrasound signals, which sparked the idea of remote control for lights and appliances. By 1975, the X10 project was conceived, so named because it was the 10th project. In 1978, X10 products started to appear in Radio Shack and Sears stores. Together with BSR, a partnership was formed. With the name X10 Limited at that time the system consisted of a 16-channel command console, a lamp module, and an appliance module. Soon after came the wall switch module and the first X10 timer. In 1985, BSR went out of business, and X10, USA, Inc. was formed. In the early 1990s, the consumer market was divided into two main categories the ultra high end with a budget of 100,000 US dollars and the mass market with budgets of 2,000 US dollars to 35,000 US dollars. CE Bus, 1984, and Lawnworks, 1991, attempted to improve reliability and replace X10. X10 became popular because it used to be one of the few home automation that could be easily retrofitted into existing homes without installing additional cabling, and because of its entry-level quality and pricing. As an added bonus I'll be giving you some pros and cons of the X10 Home Automation Project or Protocol. Pros, it uses existing electrical wiring as a physical layer for data transmission and reception. Hence it is quick to install as fewer efforts are needed. It does not require any new wiring and hence it is less expensive. It does not require quality professionals or engineers for installation as it is very simple. The protocol is very simple to implement and it supports 256 unique X10 devices on a single power line. Due to its less overhead, it has become popular in IoT, Internet of Things, for home automation. Cons, the data rate supported by the X10 protocol is very less in the order of bits per second. Hence the X10 technology can only be used for on slash off of the X10 devices. As it uses a power line for its operation, other electrical devices can cause interference to the normal operation of X10 devices. This results in the malfunctioning of the X10 devices. X10 devices are not suitable to be used as safety devices. Packet transmission from the controller to the X10 end device takes some time delay which is about 1 second for a packet consisting of 100 bits. Data acknowledgement and security features are not supported by the X10 protocol. This takes me back to what I said at the beginning of the video, of how home automation is not just a recent development. Hope this gave your mind a turnaround. And that's all for today, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.